Hello and welcome back everybody. This is part two of the pond build and if you remember last video I left off just starting to break dirt on the inside. Um, so you can see this is what I've been using is a uh, Ryobi auger. It's a 40 volt and from the tip to the base it's about three feet long or deep I can go at a time. Um, I'm also I, I found this uh, gorilla cart really it helped out as opposed to a wheelbarrow you don't have to balance it that little flip up top was really nice too it lets you dump stuff out easy and uh it, it did the job for me so as usual we got z over there protecting the area our security guard but uh yeah so i, I just started the arduous task of getting all the dirt out and like you remember in the last video z he uh he loves to help me out so it you know serves two purposes he gets a good workout and uh, at the same time he's helping me out and, and hanging out with me so it's hard to make him stay away from me when i'm doing this work because he's so curious and he wants to see what's going on so um anyway i let him help and uh he has helped quite a bit actually believe it or not uh, i know he's playing and then just sniffing and searching for stuff but it helps out <clears throat> excuse me so here you can see I'm just uh, working my creeping my way up, making progress. You can see the three holes there. And that tube, you don't have to worry about. That's for a uh, previous sprinkler system. Uh, I actually hit it when I uh, was going and doing the, f the forms, the uh, footing around the outside with the cement. So I knew it was there. I just uh, didn't want to bother taking it out until I started digging everything out. So I just uh, kept going, you know, using that same technique. Z, of course, is helping me as well. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't put the uh, cinder block up around the footing yet. Uh, because I, I wanted to make it easier to get all this dirt in and out. Well, get it out into the barrel, out to the pile that I'm making over here. Uh, I'm stacking it all here, and I'm going to save it for other projects as well as... Um, redoing the berms around the trees to help uh, contain the water. You could see I tarped everything up there because we had more rain. And uh, the good thing with the tarp, you know, it lets a little bit of water in, but nothing compared to what it would without it. So um, here you can see, you know, it's just a little saturated, but, you know, you can keep going. Um, didn't bother me at all. Uh, it sometimes makes it a little better because it, it can get dusty when it's too dry and you start breathing all that up so it actually wasn't bad at all but you can see I kind of made a little ramp to get thing the cart in and out and I decided that ramp was and that back wall there was just in the wrong spot because um, that's gonna be the deepest area so I uh, decided to go ahead and try to incorporate some steps to get down to the deep area and you can see the beginning of it there and I also didn't know how deep uh, it would be before I hit the caliche layer, which I did heat, uh, hit. And if you don't know what caliche is, it's just uh, it's like a really hard uh, soil, I suppose. It kind of feels almost like it's calcified, like you're trying to pick into a bunch of rocks um, that kind of have been molded together with cement. It's sort of weird. I haven't messed too much with it only because I figured that was a good place to stop uh, when I hit that layer and then later on I'll figure out what I'm gonna do but with that tape there you can see it's already four feet down from the footing line so I'll get the four feet plus another uh, 16 inches or so with the cinder blocks I'll put me right around six feet and uh, I do believe that should be plenty to keep the uh, water cool in the summertime here in Arizona um, as well as with the shades and stuff, I'm sure that'll help. But I figured that would probably be the easiest thing to help people get in and out. Me, probably mostly, to if I ever have to clean something or do any maintenance or whatever, it uh, it will be a little easier. If somebody falls in, God forbid, you know, they can kind of just walk their way out. Um, so that's what I figured I'd incorporate. Now, one thing I didn't talk about last time is uh, I'm not going to use a liner. What I'm planning on doing is, is putting cement in, about a four inch thick 
layer of cement through the whole thing on the inside. Uh, one of the big reasons why I'm going to go about it this way as opposed to a liner is because of all the trees that I've planted around. And you can see the birds, they've been really encouraging me and you know spring is definitely sprung and you can see all the birds out and they just love that feeder. I got another one set up and they're there all day singing to me and um, it's pretty interesting to watch uh, when you're sitting there taking a little break, a little rest and you see them getting their little pecking order in as you can see there. So, um, you know, I'm kind of been identifying some of the birds and seeing if I can see some of their habits. It's interesting nonetheless. So I'm glad that I put that there and they've all been attracted to it. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, one of the reasons why I wanted to do the cement was because all the trees around the outside, I was worried that the roots would uh, start to interfere with the liner and puncture it. So I figured cement would be a, a better long-term deal than a liner. A little more work, I guess, but um, I'd be real confident with that. And then I want to put like a fiberglass or an epoxy coating over the cement when that's dry. You know, I, um, I also wanted to take this time to give a shout out to Tobias. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel and I kind of stumbled upon it when I was getting ready to get my pond build going just so I can get some ideas from different people and uh, the one thing I liked that he did if you go check out his videos is he's the one that I saw or anyway that I saw him do first uh, put the cinder blocks up uh, so they're above ground as well as you know uh, the pond is below ground so you can get a little more depth and um, I knew that would probably be something I would need to look into because uh, again of that caliche layer that I ended up hitting uh, plus I, I like the idea that that retaining wall will kind of uh, or that cinder block wall around the outside it'll help keep you know little kids out or you know just something I, I guess sort of like a barrier remind you that you know you need to be careful in case people are drinking around there or whatever I can only picture it now so um, I'm gonna show you right here the bottom drain is what I'm gonna do next so I've decided where I'm gonna put it and how I'm gonna run the tubes the bottom drain is obviously gonna go in the deepest area there to the right but that tube is gonna come up and pop up right around here and it's gonna be at the lowest point there and come across so it can come up. And then right there, I'm gonna have all of my, uh, you know, filters, uh, separators and everything built in. So stay tuned, I'm still working on it. That will be done for the next video. We can take a look at that. Uh, I'll have the pipes in, I'm sure. And I'll have some idea of what bottom drain I'm gonna use. So again, subscribe, hit that reminder bell, and uh, I'll get the next video out here as soon as I can. Thanks again. Take care.